What's cooling? What's happening? How are you doing today? We've got the edge rushers, or the invaders as I like to call them, because when you're an edge rusher, you gotta be out of this planet. You gotta have that relentlessness, that toughness, that craziness to just go after people, the hair on fire, something like that. That's the way I feel at least, but we're gonna go through edge rushers today for the 2024 NFL Draft. Never too early, of course, and we got lots of them, so we're gonna dig in deep for this class and find the invaders starting with an, a true invader this guy's from a different planet he's from pluto i don't know he's from some different galaxy jared verse on a different verse this guy is phenomenal i mean his get off is elite it's insane he's got that relentless i'm coming after you mentality and also just a quick little uh overview of how i do this uh, these are my scouting notes over i'm not gonna read word for word and put you guys to sleep too much this isn't bedtime baby this is edge rushing time and i want to talk about these guys and some of their strengths and weaknesses jared verse he is so explosive off the line so dynamic as a pass rusher came on the scene first and foremost with the lsu game one of the best edge tapes out there on film just insane it doesn't take you long to realize this guy is going to be a problem in the nfl so strong so good speed to power He's, he's insane. I mean, he kind of, I mean, you could argue he had a better, you know, he was better in spurts for when he did play, even though he was injured for a bit, than Will Anderson this past year. And he would have been a top 10 pick, in my view, uh, had he not decided to come back. And now he's coming back, trying to refine some of the things that maybe he needs to get better on. I do have a couple of negatives, which I do think he is, he's not an elite vendor by any means. And I do want to see him clean up his missed tackles a little bit. Maybe that has to do with some stiffness there, but it's not that big of a concern. This guy is going to be a problem. And if you're the Chicago Bears, you need an edge rusher, go grab Jared first at one of those first round picks. You know what I'm saying? Number two, this guy is a bet on traits. Dallas Turner from Alabama. Some people even said, you know, including myself, like I was looking at Dallas Turner and there were times where he was better than Will Anderson. Now, I think Will Anderson way more refined of pass rusher. Dallas Turner has the alien traits. He has traits that, I know, I keep going back to that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Dallas Turner, he has insane traits. These are traits that are 101 style of traits. Like when you talk about Micah Parsons level of traits, the Von Miller type traits. I don't know if he's as bendy as Von Miller, but he has insane athletic athleticism and upside. He's just so raw as a pass rusher. His his tools are just haven't quite caught up to the refinement to his game. Will they this season? We'll find out. But this will be a big year for him to see how does that pass rush plan continue to progress. Can he put together a slew of moves and become a better pass rusher? Because if he can't, this guy's a top five type of pick. He has those high-end traits. His tape, though, for me right now is more of round two sort of range, just based on being a pass rusher. I kind of liked him more as a Sam linebacker because they played him a good amount, especially in certain games. They played him a lot at Sam linebacker. I felt like he was really good at that and, you know, using him as like a blitzing Sam linebacker in like a Frankie Luby type of role. Nonetheless, he is tools that you're going to bet on and NFL teams are going to take a chance on this guy. Good length. His strength, I'm not saying he's, you know, like weak or anything. Like he'll overpower some guys. There are some plays where he overpower. I think there was this one play I watched first Texas where he like knocked down this offense alignment. So he does have knockdown power. But I would say from down to down, he is not the most powerful guy. And he needs to get stronger this offseason, continue to build out that frame and work on getting off blocks and overall pass rushing tools. But definitely high, high end could go number one type of player other than you know, uh, Jared Verse in terms of pass rushers. Number three, this is a guy I've been kind of harping on for a little while, Leatu Latu. I thought he was going to come out in this pass draft. He reminds me basically of Jalen Phillips. I mean, there's the perfect comp in my opinion. I mean, there's not, you know, one for one or nothing, but he has such similarities in my opinion to Jalen Phillips and the way he plays his game. He's not the most powerful guy, just like Jalen Phillips. Solid speed, not an insane athlete, right? He's not Dallas Turner in terms of tools, but he's got enough juice, plenty enough athleticism to get the job done, knows how to flatten his angles and do all those things, even if he isn't the most bendy guy and whatnot, but he does a fine job. That's not super big of a concern. The biggest thing for me, like I said, in terms of what I think he needs to improve is getting a little bit stronger 
and that will really help him go up against more of a bull rush, especially at the next level competition-wise. But what this guy does so well, he's got quick hands, he knows how to defeat blockers and get to the quarterback, which is going to be a mainstay for you in the NFL level and gives him a really high floor. I know he does have the medical injury, right? He did definitely medically retire, and that is something to keep an eye on with your spine. You know, when you're messing with the back, that's a tough injury. But, hey, DK Metcalf's come along, and he looked great and didn't look like it limited him. He's got that back brace on, which is always cool, and uh, especially as an edge rusher or a defensive lineman or a linebacker, too, nonetheless. Leatu, really, really good edge. I see him as a mid to late first-round pick. Very solid. Maybe doesn't have those high, high high-end traits or tools, but I think he can be a really, really good edge rusher for a team. If you need some help, he's going to provide that day one. Uh, number four, Chop Robinson. Chop, chop, chop. I don't know. But uh, Chopped, the episode, this TV show. I used to watch that as a kid. Oh, Food Network. Does, I, I watched Food Network a lot when I was a kid. I don't know. I don't know. It just kind of interests me. Alton Brown was my favorite. Good Eats. Ooh, that was a good show, man. It really was. But going back to Chop Robinson, who I bet he can cook up some nice meals. I have no idea. But he's so explosive. His first step is insane. He's got insanely quick feet. It, it's yeah he's another one of those guys that has insane tools and i think he can really develop into a high-end pass rusher at the next level if nothing else i think he can be like a yannick and gawkway type he he needs to work on his run game he needs to work on building out his frame those are two things i think that really he has to work on this season but uh the tools are all there for chop robinson to be a really really good edge rusher just right now i think he is but more of a uh A toolsy pass rushing specialist. Want to see him become more reliable on rundowns and overall refine his pass rush tools, become stronger. Because the Ohio State tape, it wasn't good. I will say, I mean, it made me love Dewan Jones and Paris Johnson even more because they shut him down. I will say, it was not good tape, but you still see the flashes there. And when, especially when you look at the Auburn tape and the Utah tape, yeah, I mean, it's the, the tools are there, right? The first step quickness is undeniable. Number five. JT to a mole out. Oh man, this guy. Don't throw his way. I'm telling you, why do quarterbacks just leave this guy unblocked? And I mean, then they throw a screen that way. That's stupid. Oh, you think you would learn from watching him in the Penn State game? But yeah, that was one of the craziest games. Now, what I will say about Tua Mola, I mean, I, first off, his playmaking instincts are incredible, right? We saw it on display at Penn State, but it's not just that game. All the games I watched, you know, Notre Dame, Georgia, he has those instincts, just that nose for the ball. It's something about it that it's just like, yeah, this guy's going to be a good football player. I don't care where you line him up at. Put him at linebacker night. I don't think he has the, uh, the athleticism for that. Maybe if he lost a little weight, he could do that. But to him, I mean, he came out as a five-star for playing like multiple positions. So it is what it is. But to me, he's your starting base 4-3 end, and he's a very good one at that. I, I think he has limitations, though. He's not... An insane athlete. And what I mean by that, he's a good athlete. Don't get me wrong. Especially for his size at 272. And he was big. I mean, he's, he's a big guy. He's strong. He's powerful. He's got really strong hands. And he can set an edge. And I think he's going to be a great run defender. Uh, but I do think he's a little limited in terms of pass rush, right? I, I think that he's a guy where he's not going to finesse by a whole ton of guys. He does have a nice spin move where he can kind of work back on the inside track and get to the pass rusher. And he's got a good rip move, gets to the edge, and obviously, you know, his swat ability. He's always got his hands up at the perfect times. But again, he's not the most dynamic athlete. And there is definitely some stiffness coming around the corner. So, and, and also the explosion off the line was a little inconsistent for me. So there is a little of that. I almost say you could move this guy to the inside. But to me, I do think see him as more of a base Four three end, and for a team like Cincinnati, I could really see them falling in love with a team or with a guy like JT Tuamolau because, because I think he's a guy that is going to be so scheme versatile for for defensive coordinators like Lou Marunu loves those guys who can play four eye and also play off the edge, right? So for teams that love their versatility with their defensive linemen to be able to play multiple front defenses, Tuamolau is going to be your guy, and I, I see him as a late first round. Right now, again, I want to see him put together more tools as a pass rusher for me to feel comfortable about him in the first round. But I know he's going to be a good football player. You know, he's just one of those guys. He's like super high floor dude. Number six, another high floor guy, Braylon Trice from Washington. This guy basically super powerful, super relentless, and he's a decent pass rusher. 
those are that's kind of the traits to win right he's got all the traits where it's like yes you know this guy is going to be a good football player he's not he's also not the most dynamic athlete i do think he's a better you know he's a better mover and he the thing that's so good about braylon trice too that even though he's not the insane bender type he knows how to flatten his corners and, and he does you know make up for it with his footwork to get around the corner and flatten like i said to get to the quarterback which is huge right Guys like Nick Bosa and, you know, Joey Bosa and, you know, even some of the best edge rushers in the NFL, they know how to do that to a team. Miles Garrett, I mean, Miles Garrett's pretty dang bendy, especially at his size. But the best, some of the best pass rushers in the NFL, they all know how to flatten the corner, even if they're not the most bendy guys. Even if you're not Vaughn Miller, they know how to flatten the corner. Braylon Trice knows how to do that at a high level. I do think he needs to continue to get better um, in the run game, though, because he does get taken out of plays a lot. So just kind of learning to set the edge a little bit better, become more consistent in terms of your technique. He has all the tools to do it. Overall, really, really good prospect. I think he's your top of the second round type of guy. And I feel really good if you need a player who's going to be kind of just like a really consistent edge. May not be a 15 sack guy, but I think he's going to be a very, very solid edge rusher. Number seven, Jack Sawyer. Here's a guy who I think has a lot of potential to be a first rounder this year but he's not there yet and they also did play him in like that jack role there at ohio state which they also drop back into coverage quite a bit they're going to use him more at least from the sounds of it as an actual traditional edge rusher so that will be helpful i think for jack swear because i just he's not that guy i mean he can drop into coverage don't get me wrong he's not a bad athlete by any means he's 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 a guy who's just solid all around i mean he's a really solid athlete not elite but a good athlete, and he's a guy that can do all the things that you need to do. He's very actually comparable to like a Nick Bosa in terms of athletic tools. He's a guy, though, that I think that we just need to see it, right? We need to see him put together those tools, continue to refine the pass rushing tools, the, you know, all those things. I think he has all the potential, though, to be a really, really good base 4-3 end. That's the way I see him. So, and, and right now, I think he's a good run defender. Like He could stick into an NFL defense and play early downs right now in the nfl he definitely has the stack and shed ability really good run defender and he has the potential easily to be a first rounder in my eyes on to number eight adissa isaac from penn state another penn state edge rusher they're gonna have a really good dynamic one-two punch there with him and chop who man it's gonna be cool but this guy is in his own right a really really good talented player and i don't think he has the explosive burst that chop has but he's also nothing to scoff at coming off the edge. He's got a really good burst, good flexibility, change of direction, really good bend, all those things. All the athletic tools are there with Adis Isaac. And the thing that impresses me so much about this guy is his relentless motor. Like he has like an old school type of mentality. I don't know, like, you know, Lawrence Taylor, like, you better hope I never get back in there. I'm going to kick your, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's got like that sort of prowess to him i don't know what it is about it but when he tackles guys he's not just gonna you know oh, oh, let me get a pillow down on the ground and I'll, I'll fluff it up for you no he's throwing dudes to the ground with force with brute force it's kind of fun to watch anyway yeah he's just relentless as a tackler and i, I love that man so that's one of my biggest things with him and he also is really good at watching the football diagnosing skills he doesn't really get fooled a ton by rpos keeps his head up those are big things for me. Now, I do think that he needs to get stronger, right? He needs to get better in the run game, especially, right? He does get overpowered. But around two grade for me with Adissa Isaac, very, very good edge rusher. Number nine, Aaron Lewis, Rutgers. This dude's, oh man, Rutgers. They've got some good players too, and he is really talented. This guy, I could actually see moving inside at the next level if he continues to build out his frame because he definitely has a lot more room where he can build out some muscle mass on that frame. Like, I think he can hold 270 plus, no problem. But if he wants to stick at round 250, I mean, he could do it. I just think I maybe would rather see him get up to around 260, 265, and he could roll there as a base 4-3 end, or he could get up to 275, 280, and move inside, right, and become maybe a 3-4 defensive end because he has that build and that profile, the good length, solid build all around where I feel like he could be really good at that. Plus, he's got that lateral quicks. He's really good lateral mover. And when he did work on the inside versus guards, 
he destroyed him. I mean, he's got really good ability to go up against those guards and, and really swipe around him. Like I said, with his fast hands. So he's got really fast hands where he can uh, use to defeat blockers. And he's another guy that has a relentless, relentless motor. But that goes to the negatives for me and the things that I think he needs to improve upon. Getting stronger because when he did go up against some stronger guys. And I, hey, I watched the best tape out there. Ohio State. Now, Penn State, with the game I did watch was the uh, bowl or the end of the season game for them. And he, he didn't go up against... Olu Fashanu, he's going up against the backup. So with that being said, there is some there. But still, Penn State doesn't have bad backups or nothing. But Michigan, they've got some good tackles he was going up against. And I felt like his tape, definitely he hung in there. And he he gave those Ohio State guys some formability. I don't know if that's the word. Michigan, they give all these dudes some really good uh, one-on-one matchups. He won some, he lost some, right? And I think he continued to add some counters. Because he is a bit, you know, where I'm going to beat you to the edge or I'm going to spin back inside. Those kind of things, you know, continue to add some counters when you do get locked up. But overall, I really was impressed with him. Chris Braswell, the other Alabama edge rusher. And he's going to be opposite there with Dallas Turner getting the starting job here this season. And what I did watch from him in limited tape, I watched the games where he played the most in. And I was impressed, actually, with his pass rush upside and his tools. He's not a good run defender right now, and I I felt like he's going to have to really improve his technique run defense-wise. But he has, like, serious flashes as a good pass rusher, and he shows some good strength profile, and he he needs to continue to build some more. Again, it's kind of like Dallas Turner. Like, they show flashes of strength, but I think they continue to get stronger, get more refined in their body. But, I mean, Chris Bradwell is a little more built out compared to Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner is more a little more thin Chris Braswell really good athlete though for especially for I mean six foot three 240 pounds not the biggest guy but I think he's got good enough length to get the job done and his pursuit speed is insane I think he closes really well and I I think he's going to be a nice pass rusher especially an early early down situational type of guy three four edge type of prospect third round to me seems like a good value who's going to get, hopefully, get we get to see a bigger sample size, right? Because he was in a limited basis, didn't play a full-time starting role, and now should be in that competition to at least be the starter. He's listed as a starter and hopefully gets that chance because he definitely has serious potential there. Uh, next guy, Corey Foreman. Whew, man, George Foreman. Oh, he's got, he's got some ability like George Foreman, but Corey Foreman, maybe able to make the Corey Foreman grill. But out there at USC, 6'5", 236 pounds. I don't know, he was playing really thin. And he's a guy where he's got so much tool. And he also, I think he was a five-star. He's got a big pedigree behind him. And for a reason. Like, this dude is a super athlete. He's got all the high-end traits you look for. The length, the size, the speed, the athleticism. He's an incredible athlete. I mean, incredible athlete. He is just so raw. I mean, so, so raw that we will see. I mean, he was one of the biggest projections that I had to make in this. I do think strictly off of tools, he's like that late third rounder range. Like you could take him no problem in the Drake Jackson range where he went. You know, even late round two, considering depending on who's on the board, if you need an edge rusher and you're good at developing guys, because Corey Foreman has all the developmental track to be a good edge rusher. It's just he's so raw with his pass rush moves, his consistency in the run game, all those things. Now, I was impressed with his coverage and things. He made a really nice play in the UCLA game that I watched. He made like the a pick at the end of the game. It was like, that's a good game too. That was a really good game. UCLA versus USC. It's like 48 to 45 or something. He makes a game winning interception. So he's got some good coverage instincts and definitely can drop into coverage. Like I said, smooth athlete. I'm um, not the saying that that's what you want to do with him because I think ultimately you want him to be a, a pass rusher because he's got all those traits to be a really good one. On to number 12, Jasheen Davis from Wake Forest. Guy actually came across in the comments section and Joey, I forget your last name, but yo, I appreciate it, man. I love when people comment and it's how you find about uh, find out about a lot of players. And Jasheen Davis is a guy I came across. And I'm like, yo, I gotta watch this dude and really good. Yeah, he's really, really good. And he's he's a good athlete in his own right too. He's got those long stride hands and stuff like that. But uh yeah, he's got that relentless motor. I've seen this is another guy I've seen that you know, he's not afraid to come after him 15, 20 yards down the field and tackle you. He's not afraid to make plays down the field by by any means. I was so impressed, though, with his, like, one-arm bull rush. And he's got a nice bull rush where he works, works the tackle, gets him off balance, and then cuts back inside. 
And also was really impressed with him on stunts. I think a team that, that runs a lot of stunts are going to take a look at this guy because he's really good on him. He's got the lateral quicks for sure. So it's been under the under the radar at the current moment. So keep an eye on Jasheen Davis from Wake Forest. This guy can play. I think he'd be a nice, at least rotational pass for sure. Or even even an early rundown run defender because he can play a run defense. Zion Tui Pelo Fatui from Washington. And I said that weird, but this guy, he's got so, he's so twitchy, man. He's so explosive, so twitchy, and his pass rush ability, it's its there. We have just been waiting for consistency. He's had injuries throughout his career, and it's just kind of been up and down for him. Can he put it together? That's the big question for me, because if he can put it all together this season, stay more consistent, then yeah, he can work himself into maybe a day two conversation easily. I think he could be in that Will McDonald conversation. And while he doesn't have the length of Will McDonald, hey, he's got some twitchiness that Will McDonald has. And he's got some bend for sure. And he's a guy that is a really, really good pass rusher. Now, at the same time, his run defense is a problem. And that's why I see him more as a situational pass rusher. And I just don't think I could take him round two because I do think he's more of a situational guy at the moment. Really, really struggling, in my opinion, getting off blocks in the run game, stack and shedding technique wise all those things he's going to need some time to develop not that he can't do it but i want to see it and see it uh, more consistently this year for him so we'll see if he can develop there in that department but i love his pass rush ability and, and that's going to be something that teams are going to look at and round four i think that's a nice place but again you have to do you have to look at the medical history and kind of weigh those options as well so we'll see he's definitely one of those dudes that could be a surprise on draft day even if he has a good season because the medical things we don't know behind the scenes right that the nfl teams are going to do their due diligence on number 14 andre carter here's another guy that i kind of came across as a hoosier fan you know iu let's go and uh you know i have to put an indiana guy on here and uh this guy's good in his own right i mean yes i root for you know iu and purdue and i try you know or hopefully they they can succeed this guy's going to transfer from western michigan and he's a guy that is really strong good bull rusher and that's what i think he's gonna be he's like a power rusher at the next level and gives me a little I mean, as a Jets fan maybe a little bit of Michael Clemens sort of vibes I don't think he's as violent and powerful as Michael Clemens but he's got maybe some of those traits to his game and that's why I think that he can be a really really solid power rusher at the next level I just want to continue to see him work on the the, the bull rush more consistently and just continue to go to that because I think that's going to be his bread and butter at the next level the big thing for me though that he needs to get better at is stop flopping so much there were so many times where i'm like stop throwing your hands up he would just you know like i get it maybe people are holding him because he's the best player and he's going up against you know maybe smaller competition it is what it is but even if they're holding you stop throwing your hands up and taking yourself out of the play keep working you know what i mean that's the only thing that i had problems with him and he also maybe a little bit of a hothead too he did have a big penalty i heard about in like the northern illinois game that caused them to lose the game because they had a pick six and yet unnecessary roughness i believe something that caused them not to get the interception and they ended up losing the game 24 21 so there was that and you know i can see it because he plays too hot sometimes but that is also something that i love about him is that he plays pissed off i mean just kind of like michael clemens like he is when he gets pissed off he came back on this one play i forget which game it was maybe it was the michigan state or the central michigan game where he got he was like pissed off for being held and he comes back the next play and just barrels over this guy i'm like <laughs> oh man that's fun that's hilarious but yeah he plays pissed off so i'm rooting for him here andre carter another andre carter i actually like i said i like him more I like his power ability good run defender too and yeah you had to know where number one was at all time that wish from western michigan Washington, Michigan. At number 15, Brandon Dorless, who's a guy that almost thought was going to come out this year. And I would have been, you know, I still think he would have been kind of a mid round selection this past draft, somewhere in the fourth, fifth round. What he does so well, and I actually, I view him more as a 4i, 5 tech, but I, not that he can't play off the edge. I do think he can, especially for certain schemes, right? But I do kind of like him in that role, 4i, 5 tech, because he's he's got good lateral quickness and that good initial burst where he can really get on top of guards and, and make them trip up, right, literally. And he's got a nice variety of, of moves with his hands. He's got quick hands, and he can defeat blockers that way for sure. So I like that ability to his game, but I do think he needs to get stronger, especially with his hands, you know, kind of better technique, should I say, with that, and his stack and shed ability, especially in on rundowns. 
So that's kind of one of my biggest concerns there. And always continue to work on counters because I did notice he got locked up a bit, especially on the edge, because I don't think he has like super dynamic ability, athleticism to be an edge rusher full time per se. We'll see. Again, depending on your scheme and what you want to do. But this is a guy who can move inside and out, give you some versatility there. But I really do like him on more of an inside role going up against guards with that lateral quickness. On to number 16 and number 17. We're going to talk about the Murphy brothers and Grayson Murphy, Gabriel Murphy. Both very similar, but different. There's a couple of differences, so we'll kind of go over it. One thing I do say is I was a little worried. I'm like, oh, no, it's going to be so difficult scouting these two guys. They're the same. They literally kind of look the same out there. But they coordinate what they wear. That was hilarious because one game, you know, like every single game I watch, Gabriel and would wear a left sleeve, and then Grayson would wear a right sleeve. So they were always coordinated to make sure that they had different sleeves. So I really appreciate that. They're looking out for us out here, watching film on them. So let's talk about their similarities first and foremost. They're both really good get off. They have quickness, lateral quicks to get around tackles, um, and offense alignment in general. Because Gabriel plays more inside especially on rushdowns and we'll talk about some of the differences here in a second but both have good get off lateral agility able to hit speed to power those are kind of their strengths to their game and i think they're gonna be really really good rotational situational pass rushers now what they both struggle with a little bit run defense stack and shed ability that's something i think they both need to get better at using their hands striking be more consistent in that regard and Again, they're not the most physical guys in terms of like when they're straight up on them. I don't think they have much pushback power or displacement power, which is fine. You know, it is what it is. I see them more as finesse guys. You know what I mean? Anyway, going on to some differences players wise and why I put Grayson over Gabriel. First off, uh, Gabriel, I was just a little bit more impressed with his with his consistency winning as a pass rusher. But it's, it's tough, man. This was so difficult. Honestly, it, you know, I know Gabriel's kind of being unanimously ranked higher right now. And it could be because he also has a little more versatility. They played him a lot on the inside. And he really played well against guards and centers, like with his lateral quickness. And he has a good build where he can go up against, especially some smaller guards and, and centers, where he can definitely out lateral agility them no problem any day of the week. And that's something that was really impressive with him. But um, you know, that's that was just one knock for me was Gabriel. I didn't feel like he was as consistent with his uh, getting to the quarterback as Grayson. So that's kind of why I put him a little bit higher. Now, what I will say in Gabriel's defense and what I think he was better at than Grayson was that uh, Gabriel or sorry, Grayson jumped the snap way too much. I mean, he had so many full start penalties. Like every game I watched, I believe he had at least one full start penalty. So he was trying to time the snap. He timed the snap many times, but there were also times where, you know, you got to be careful. So he took, you got to be careful when you're drafting him saying, Hey, we got to take those, you know, those lumps with it, but definitely really, really good, uh, jump in the snap sometimes. But again, it also bites you in the dust at times. Now with Gabriel, I think that he was better at, uh, snatching like when defenders were lunging at him or sorry offense alignment or tight ends were lunging at him he was better at defeating blocks and getting them on the ground like you better not come lunging at gray bill murphy because he will outswipe you with his lateral agility and get by you in a hurry so that was one thing i thought he did better at than grayson so it was nick and tuck i mean it's really tough to put who over who both i see as situational pass rushers at the next level and very solid ones at that number 18 david walker Central Arkansas, this is a guy where super high production, dominant at a small school level, and I could, you know, yes, there's the projection, right? And that's one thing, you know, you have to wonder about with him. And I don't think he's got insane length. I don't think he's an insane athlete or anything like that. But I do think he checks off the box. And I saw good lateral agility where he can definitely get around and maneuver around tackles. And even if you put him on the inside on pass rushing downs, I think he can move around guards. So he shows plenty enough athleticism to get the job done combined with he's shown flashes of good pass rush tools and i still think he can work on his counters when he does get locked up especially for stronger guys at the next level will be a bit more of a problem but i was impressed with some of his ability as a pass rusher and he was a relentless pass rusher never giving up always fighting getting after the quarterback so this is a guy that i think that you know definitely sneaky keep an eye out on him right he's not just a a small school guy with can i think he can definitely produce and he should get a senior bowl invite i hope so because he's going to be a guy i keep a close eye out on number 19 akeem mezador he just too athletically limited i know he's really you know high up on boards right now i just didn't quite see it for me personally 
Um, again, maybe I watched the wrong tape. I watched North Carolina, Duke, and Clemson, but I just didn't see it. You know, I didn't see the pass rush consistency. I see a guy who can be a nice run defender, but at the same time, I didn't think he was overwhelming in that department because, again, athletically wise, he's not going to chase down a ton of guys. But what he is so good at is he's really good at stack and shed. And I, I think that his technique there is impressive. His run defense in general is really, really good. And I, I think for a team that is looking for a base floor 4 3 end, or even a guy who plays on the inside as a 4 I, which his best reps also came, I feel like, at 4 I. Just like Brandon Dorless, I feel like he was, because he was, like, he's not a terrible athlete by any means. But versus going up against guards, he was able to use some more lateral quickness to get by guys. And that's where I was most impressed with him as a pass rusher. I actually saw like all his sacks come really like impressive sacks come against. So that just lack of consistency as a pass rusher. I just didn't see him win a whole ton of reps one on one versus tackles on the outside had me rank him lower. But he's not a bad player by any means. And I think he's going to be a really solid player. I just don't see him as maybe a high end starter or you know, or even a starter. I think maybe a rotational player or something like that. On to number 20, and I'm only going to say his name once. <laughs> I'm struggling with this one. Princely Uma Yalin. I, I, I don't know, okay? I, that's a really tough one. I'm going to have to really work on this one in the offseason. Uma Yalin. I said it twice, but hey, I'm going to keep working on it. Practice it. Uma Yalin. Uma Yalin. I think I'm pronouncing that wrong. Say that five times fast. Uma Yalin. Uma Okay, I can't do it. But, okay, Princely Here's a guy with a monster build, very raw as a pass rusher, but definitely has some traits where teams in, or you know scouts are going to keep a close eye on this guy. I just couldn't put him that high because again, you know I didn't see him win consistently enough as a pass rusher. The Florida guys in general, this is what they do out there. They go out. This is this is it, right? They're holding their guy. Oh. There's the guy running right by me. What should I do? You know, that's the only problem. You got to get, you know, stack and shed ability. Like, or like he has that first part of it, right? He's able to get his hands on the, on the uh, offensive lineman or tackles or tight ends chest and, you know, hold them in point. But you just got to, you know, disengage quicker. So those are things, you know, as a pass rusher, disengaging blocks, pass rush tools, because he just doesn't have many pass rush tools right now. I mean, he shows off a nice spin move that I like. That was really the one way he got pressure kind of like just try to get the uh, tackle off balance and spin back inside. But overall, we'll see, right? He's definitely a developmental guy. I'm going to keep a close eye out on and try to learn how to pronounce his name. But for the time being, very much uh, need to see more with him. And he's not an insane athlete by any means either. I mean, he's a good athlete, don't get me wrong. And he has a lot of room to grow and build. Like he could, he has the room to build into a 3-4 uh, a defensive end. No problem. Plenty enough length. And uh, plenty enough room to grow in your body and, and get stronger. So we'll see with him. Going to be a guy I keep a close eye out on. Final guy, Jordan Birch, formerly of South Carolina, going over to Oregon. I actually do like him. I think he's got a really, really base floor and a very solid one at that. And could be more of a riser. I could see him more in that fourth round conversation. But for the time being, we'll see how he does at Oregon this year. He should get more of a pass rush role too. Because that was really my big knock on him. Very little pass rush tools or you know should I what I mean by that is like he did not win really at all and another thing was when he did go for more you know finesse pass rushes he typically like spin moves and you know outside chops and he would try them you know what I mean try to do like a euro step but he typically would fall on the ground I just think there's a lot of stiffness there lack of athleticism overall so I want to see him just really become a good bull rusher because I do think he's got great strength and he's got really long arms he's got a big build so like just perfect a, a bull rush you know what i mean even if you become just a bull rusher that can work i mean you can be good a good situational bull rusher pass rusher at the next level and he's a great run defender too like he's another guy that he knows how to lock out stack and shed ability those are the things there that i think he can be a really good base floor guy for a 4 3 end team that are looking for a decent early down run defender so i like him in that role we'll just see if he can put together some pass rush moves here at oregon so this could be a good spot for him Keep an eye out on him, transferred over from South Carolina. Anyway, that is it for the Edge Rushers preseason edition for the 2024 NFL Draft. Let me know. I'm sure there's some guys I missed out there. Just try to get through as many as I possibly could. But if there's a guy you like a lot, let me know. I'm curious. Uh, I hope everyone has a cool day. My name is G-Sling. I'll talk to you later.